You shall call, and I will answer you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Wait on the Lord, and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Please be seated. Let me say welcome to everyone and trust that as we meet this evening, even though we have lost a loved one, that we will conduct ourselves in decency and in order. And perhaps one of the first things that is not on the program that you may need to do is to put your phone on silence or vibration. Uh, it, the service is being recorded and being streamed alive, and we don't want to get that kind of uh, destruction. And so please, do your best where that is concerned. Uh, so please put your phones on silence, our vibration. Um, I, I love what I'm seeing. You're going to always uh, keep on your mask. We are still in the COVID times. I know most folks here are family members, and so it's okay, uh, the seating right now. But do your best if you, if you, when you're coming up here, you may, you may take off your mask. Um, if you don't have to, please don't. All right, so please just observe these few rules and um, the program is in your hands. So the program will run as is will call from time to time. May the Lord bless us as we come and reflect, give thanks for a life that was well lived, a life of the Maranatha Church family. I'm sure when Pastor Williamson comes up here, he will also express his sympathies on behalf of the Brooklyn faith where his, her membership resided for the last 40 years. Amen. We're just happy and delighted to host and to be a part, to partner with you in this regard. And so again, please as best we can, let us do everything with decency and in order and uh, let the program flow as best we can. Uh, may the Lord bless us as we go through this program. So at this time we call upon Garnet Burn Burton to give opening prayer followed by opening in Holy Holy to what the angels sing. Oh, one final thing, you use the lower platform, except for the, those of us participating right here. So please, when you come, you use the lower platform. All right? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. To the Ford family, I give my deepest condolences. Let us pray. Let's bow our heads. Eternal and ever loving God and our Father, who art in heaven. God of creation, God of redemption, and God of eternity. We come now bowing in thy presence. We come with sadness in our heart because we have lost a loved one. We have lost a sister, a mother, a friend. 
but because of thy great promises, we are not weeping as those that have no hope. So we pray in a special way that you may keep us faithful and true to thee. We pray for the families that you may keep them safe, keep them under the shadow of your wing. We understand that because of your love, you have told us in thy words that though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil because thy rod and thy staff do comfort us. We all are one family and we pray that you may keep us as we continue through this experience, help us that we all will turn our hearts and mind truly to thee so that when time and earth shall be no more because of thy promises we know that death itself shall die so bless us and keep us and we pray in a special way that we may endow your man servant as he speak that we speak words of comfort life and courage so that we all will be will continue to be courageous knowing that when thou shalt come, we will have no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain. So again, I ask that thou may keep us faithful unto thee. Be with the families again and keep us in their presence and help us to be faithful unto the end so that when thou shalt come, we shall go and live and reign with thee throughout eternity where there will be no more sickness, there will be no more sorrow, there will be no more parting, and there will be no more death. We thank thee for hearing. We thank you for answering our prayers. Keep us and save us when thou comest in thy kingdom, we pray. In Jesus' name. Good evening, saints of God. Um, the song which I will sing for you now will remind us that there is singing up in heaven. It also reminds us that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it also reminds us that no, without holiness, no one will see God. So please pay much attention to the words of the song. Not to me, not to the singer, but to the words of the song. There is singing up in heaven such as we have never known. Where the angels sing the praises of the Lamb upon the throne. Their sweet harp are ever tuneful, and their voices always clear. Oh, that we might be more like them while we serve the Master here. Holy, holy is what the angels sing. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, they will fold their wing. For angels never felt the joy that all salvation brings. But I hear another anthem blending voices clear and strong. And to him who hath redeemed us and hath bought us is the song. We have come through tribulation to this land so fair and bright. In the fountain freely flowing, he hath made our garment white. 
Holy, holy is what the angels sing, and I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, they will fold their wing. For angel never felt the joy that our salvation bring. Then the angels stand and listen, for they cannot join that song. Like the sound of many water, by the happy blood was strong. For they sing about great trial, battle fought and victory won. And they praise their great Redeemer, who had said to them, well done. Holy, holy is what the angels sing. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, they will fall their wing. For angel never felt the joy that our salvation brings. So although I'm not an angel, yet I know that over there, I will join the blessed chorus that the angel cannot share. I will sing about my Savior, who upon the Calvary freely pardoned my transgression, died to set a sinner free. Holy, holy is what the angels sing. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, they will fold their wing. For angel never felt the joy that our salvation brings. Amen. We're going to invite first Carlin Henry to give first scripture reading, followed by Henry Ballin, second scripture reading. And then we'll take a tribute from Gloria Chambers Williams, Broken Chain. And again, I just Remind you, you use the lower lectern and the lower platform, right? In this order. Good evening, everyone. Scripture reading. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 58. I will read in your hearing. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and in this mortal must be put on immortality. 
So when this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall all be brought to pass. The saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grace, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Thank you. Evening, families and friends. So uh, I'm doing a second lesson, which is taken from First Thessalonians 4, from 13 to 18. You read it. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those things which those who have fallen asleep. Let your sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him who's, sorry, bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means prevent those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Here in this, a portion of God's word. Good evening, everyone. Okay, I'll be reading a poem called The Broken Chain. We little knew that day God was going to call your name. In life, we loved you dearly. In death, we do the same. It broke our hearts to lose you. You did not go alone, for part of us went with you the day God called you home. You left us beautiful memories. Your love is still our guide. And although we cannot see you, you are always at our side. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us one by one, the chain will link again. Amen.
So, as I call um, the various items, I'm going to ask that you just meet Brother Kirk, who's right here, so you can get a wipe, and um, we keep our safety protocols in place, all right? So, coming up next, we are going to have some tributes, and uh, as you are that impressed to make a tribute, um, I'm going to ask that you just meet Brother Kirk right here by the door so that we can give your wives, like I have one, I, I don't want the preacher to get sick when he comes up here, so I'm going to wipe off this, and um, you offer your tribute. So, we're going to take the tributes now. Um, please, as best you can, meet Brother Kirk right here, and you see the time limit, because if five person give tribute in 10 minutes, that's at least 10 minutes. Uh, plus, by the time you walk up here, that's another minute or so. That's 12, 30 minutes. So, <laughs> we don't want to stay here all evening. You know that. And so, please, um, we probably can take four or five tributes. Uh, so, please meet Brother Kirk right now by the, by the door as we offer the, those tributes. And after those tributes, we're going to have Cable Minute. Uh, giving the obituary. Good evening, everyone. Oh, Lord. Like the Bible says, cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. And that's what we're going to do this evening. Cast all our cares upon him. Oh, I can't find words, but I'll just try to sing a little something. <clears throat> I don't know about tomorrow. Cause I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine. Cause its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry about the future. Cause I know what Jesus said. But today I walk beside him, for I know what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't see. Every step is getting lighter as the golden steers I climb. Every burden getting lighter and every cloud is silver line. Where the sun is always shining, where no tears may dim the eye at the ending of the rainbow. Where the mountain touched the skies. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know, I know who holds tomorrow. tomorrow 
It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the part that be my portion through the flames or through the flood, but his presence goes before me. And I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know, I know, yes, I know who holds tomorrow. Sinti, otherwise known as Gloria Ford, is my cousin. You know, we all grew up together in Jamaica, West Indies. And you know, she loved, she loved the Lord. And even though we are in the same country, but sometimes we haven't seen each other for a long time. But now she went to sleep. But you know, this sleep is not like the one that you go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning and sit around the table and have breakfast. This one is sleeping in Jesus. Sleeping in Jesus. And according to record, if only in this life that we have hope, we are the of men most miserable. But we have an hope that burns within our heart. And that hope is to have part in the first resurrection. Is my hope, is my hope that we will have part in the first resurrection. You know, blessed are the dead which die in Christ. For the rest from their labor and their work do follow them. Sleep and take your rest, Gloria. Good evening, church family. Um, my name is Brother Yannick Wiley. I'm also a member of Brooklyn Faith along with Sister Fort. I'm speaking on behalf of the Brooklyn Faith Sabbath School Lower Division and the Children's Ministry. At this moment, I'm going to ask all the teachers that are also part of the Sabbath School and Children's Department to please stand to represent Sister Fort and Brooklyn Faith. Thank you. Sister Ford been, as they said, a member of Brooklyn Faith for years, and she helped with the children's Sabbath school division. She had taught the kindergarten class along with a whole lot of teachers, but she worked along with kin the kindergarten teachers, Sister Pamela Ralph, Sister Cecilia Ambersley, Sister Nicole Ashby, Sister Sandra Boyd, and Brother Joshua Stovey. And she worked along with them, and they did a successful job help teaching the kindergartens. And she will always be remembered with her kindness. And I send my condolence and sympathy for, to the rest of the Ford family and friends. 
Amen. Right. Thank you very much for those tributes and those expressions of sympathies and uh, commendations. We are going to move on. The, we're going to have the bittery by Cable Maynot. And followed by a musical selection from Odin Roden. So let's take those items in this order. Can you hear me loud? Okay, great, great. Again, let, me, let I repeat myself. It's a pleasure to read this obituary for my cousin, Gloria. Gloria Ford was born on March 27, 1952, in Dallas Castle, Jamaica, West Indies, to Alexander and Louise Ford. Gloria passed away quietly on March 26, 2021, just the day before her 70th birthday. Gloria's initial schooling began at Dallas Wesley School. She accepted the Lord at an early age in her life and became a member of Dallas Seventh Day Adventist Church. In 1981, Gloria migrated to the United States. She continued her spiritual journey by becoming a member of Brooklyn Faith Seventh Day Adventist Church. Gloria served as an usher there at Brooklyn Faith for many years. She was a, as everybody said, a God-fearing woman. She was humble. Everyone knows that. She speak not a lot, but when she spoke, her words were kind, and they were also reassuring. Gloria loved her family, her job, and most importantly, she loved God. She was a nurturing individual who would give her last to make sure that someone else was happy. Gloria was a very respectful person. For the most part, when you see her, she always have a smile on her face. Gloria retired from her job in 2018 and became more involved in the church, as someone just mentioned, she taught the younger siblings in the church or the younger uh, part of the congregation. Gloria was dearly loved by her family. She will be forever missed, especially by her son Morgan, Anthony Morgan. She left grandchildren, great grand, brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, and a host of cousins. 
which I am one. And many friends and loved ones in the church and loved ones that I can't mention. Gloria, you will be dearly missed by all of us that are present here today. Thank you. Uh, allow me to correct uh, something before it gets broken. So we are going to take uh, some items I missed early on. And that is, we're going to take the My Morgan, and we're also going to take um, a tribute by the Osha Federation, Brooklyn Faith SDA. So let's do it this way, Osha Federation, Brooklyn Faith SDA, followed by the poem by the My Morgan. Let's take these. Thank you. Good, good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eric Shan. I'm the president of the Northeastern Conference Usher's Federation. And beside me is Sister Beckford. Sister Beckford. Um, our next officer is coming in. She's just um, changing our, putting on our shoes. Um, we have lost, sorry, we have lost, sorry, we have lost a faithful servant of God in Sister Gloria Ford. She was a hard-working usher. She was always on time when it's time to usher. She was very faithful to our post, and we would have daily miss her. There's, there's no word we could find that to let the family know how sorry we are to, for the, of the passing of their family member. But we know that God is in charge, and he knows everything. And we just hope and keep the faith that on that resurrection day, if it's God's will, we'll see our, we'll see our loved ones again. This is a tribute that we give to our ushers that pass on. It's, sister, is there anything that we may use to, per to perpetrate the memory of our departed sister Gloria Ford, a member of the usher's ministry. Yes, I hold in my hand a pair of spotless white gloves, which de denotes the purity and the righteousness of Christ, which every usher strives to emulate. Sister, have you found anything that can serve as a reminder to us of our sister Gloria Ford, who faithfully served as a member of the usher's department of her church. Yes, I found a gold pin worn by members of the Northeastern Conference Usher's Federation, which shows that she was an ardent worker who did what she could to, em to enhance the services of the house of God. Sister, have you anything further that can use as a memento of Gloria for full faithful service. Yes, I hold in my hand the badge of honor of the Northeastern Conference Ushers Federation and a Christian usher. These three mementos of faithful service I shall place in the archives of the Northeastern Conference Ushers Federation so that generations to come shall know that our dear sister Gloria Ford spend a life of service as an usher in the house of God. May God continue to bless each and every one of you, and again, from the Usher Federation, our condolences to the family.
Hello, the church. Hello to the church. My name is Des Moines Morgan, and I am here on behalf to support my beloved grandmother that has passed on to the heavens. And the main momentum, the main memento that I want to share with you all is that someone can be gone, but they're not forgotten. So I want everyone, I want everyone, whether you're a friend of hers or a family member of hers, whether you cried with her, laughed with her, went to church with her, or went on a bus with her, I want you to, for this day and tomorrow, this is day, as you think about her and her passing on to the heavens, I want you all to embody what she would want from all of you and all of your all of your mistakes, all of your imperfections, I want you to all to embody what she would want for all of us in our goals, as that is what we should do to honor her passing on to the heavens. So I would like to perform a instru I will not be performing a poem, I'll be performing an instru instrumental tribute of the hymn when we all get to heaven get to heaven to honor her and for everyone to know that we must all be jovial in this time of mourning for the event of passing away because that is the time that we like my grandma was able to go to the heavens
stuff. Uh, Damai, if I should go before you go, then you have to play this for me. <laughs> uh, pastor Roger Wilson is the pastor of Sister Gloria, and this afternoon he'll bring a word of comfort to our hearts. He's a man of God. Uh, we go way back past, uh, maybe 50 years ago, as we did our schooling uh, right there in Jamaica. And I'm um, sure that it's going to be a good word. A word that will challenge us and will remind us that the dead in Christ will rise first. Before he comes, another minister, minister of the gospel, one who sings like no one else can, Odin Roden will bring that special musical item. The next voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Roger Wilson, our dear pastor. Good evening, everyone. I want to extend condolences to the family during this time. We do hope that this song will encourage your hearts. Time will be when earth and heaven will all pass away. And it's not a dream. See, God will make all things new that day. Gone is the curse on which I stumbled and fell. Evil will vanish to eternal hell. But when God comes, she will have no more nights, no more pain. We'll have no more tears. We'll never cry again. But we'll sing praises to the great I am, and we will live in the light of the risen the nations bow down to sing the only sound is the praises to Christ my King then slowly the names from those books are read but church I know is the king so I have no need no need to fear no more night no more pain she'll have no no more tears she'll never cry again but one day She'll sing praises to the great I am, and we will live in the light of the region lamb. For she over there, God's got a mansion prepared. 
prepared for me. There I shall live with my Savior eternally. No. No more tears She'll never cry again But one day she'll say praises to The great I am We will sing before him We will bow before him Oh, the risen lamb We will sing praises to The great been for the will of God on today, Sister Gloria would have just got up and waved. The truth is, if she got up right now, many of us would not be in here. <laughs> but God is a good God, amen? On behalf of the immediate past pastor of this Brooklyn Faith Church, I want to Bring greetings on behalf of Pastor King, on behalf of myself and the church, those who have worked with Sister Gloria and as an usher and a teacher and those who've experienced her as a member. We all do miss Sister Ford. She said little, but accomplished much. Amen. Amen. It was difficult writing this message because we shared the same space only a few hours before she died. And there was absolutely nothing in my estimation was wrong with her. So the news hit me like a ton of bricks and several times I tried to write the sermon and just scrap the paper and throw it away. Finally, I settled on simply never out of options. So just hold fast. Father, we ask you today to be with us. Be with this family. Death crept up on them without notice. And so we ask you to help them to be strong and where they are weak, strengthen them. And for the next few moments as we wrestle with the word, may the word wrestle with us that we will make our calling and election sure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to borrow the words of the Apostle John. When I, I actually met Sister Ford vicariously through her son when he was a boy. When he was young, he had dreadlocks, and he just hang out, and I still got to see his little daughter. She was a little baby at the time. I got to find her one day and greet her. She was kind to me, but John, in writing the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and 25, he simply said this, but that which ye have hold fast. Till I come. Jesus speaking directly to those who love him. 
the English writers of the Bible added the word already. That which you have already hold fast. And if I know, Sister Ford, there's a lot of things that she left with you. I'm going to challenge you as we journey through the next few moments to hold fast to those things. Have you ever felt, both family, friends, and acquaintances, have you ever felt that God should be brought up on charges of reckless abandonment? I think from time to time, if we are telling the truth, each of us at some point or another made this charge. And if we did not do it audibly, we thought about it. Whoever you are, wherever you're coming from, if you're looking at me right now or you're joining us uh, through social media, I believe that at some point or another, each of us have charged God of being reckless. Surely, the idea of God being reckless may sound far-fetched to those who are too holy to live or too righteous to survive. But for the rest of us who live day by day and, may, and face the challenges day by day, there are times when life makes absolutely no sense. And I may not be talking to anybody else, but I'm going to talk to the family Today, uh, the news when it came, it made no sense. And in that moment, many of you may have asked the question, is there really a God that would snatch somebody so good, so blessed, uh, so great? Would God snatch someone like that away in the prime of her life after she had worked all these years spend all these funds and raise all these children and now she has retired and is about to enjoy her life suddenly in the midst of that statement something happened sometimes it makes absolutely no sense And every now and then, you will come to uh, the forefront and recognize that in front of you, there are obstacles that makes absolutely no sense. I want to hasten to say to you today that you're not alone in this situation. I want to hasten quickly to say to you that yes, she was taken too early. Yes, she didn't deserve that. Yes, you did not deserve that. But can I tell you that you're not alone in this situation? Just about 2,000 years, the best man that ever roamed the earth. 2,000 years ago, the man who provided fishes and loaves. 2,000 years ago, him who provided righteousness, justice, and mercy. 2,000 years ago, in the midst of all his good doing, something happened. And they hung him on a cross and stripped him high and stretched him wide. And in the midst of his agony, he cried out, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? It would seem that the pain was too much. It would seem as though the journey was too difficult. It would seem as though all hope was lost. But in the midst of him crying out, he recognized that he was not out of options, preacher. He still had one bullet left in his gun. He had one last option. And that option was to say nevertheless. Yes, it may seem today that you're out of options. It may seem today that things are not fair. It may seem today that you're all alone. But can I tell you that there is a God who still loves you. There is a God who is still looking out for you. 
he's the same God who watched the Hebrew boys be thrown in the lion's den. But he was the same God who got in the lion's den before they got there. He was the same God who watched the three boys be cast into the flame of fire. But before they left the hands of those who were casting them and got into the fire, the same God who allowed it was there waiting for them. What am I saying to you today? I'm saying to you today that between her dying and you surviving, God showed up in your space and he's beckoning you and saying to you today that you're not out of options. It may seem that all hope is gone. But John reminds us in that beautiful passage we read earlier on. In Revelation 2 and 25. He says, but you know what? Hold on to that which you have. There's a little bit of glory in all of you. Keep holding on to it. Come on, can I talk to somebody up in here today? There's some joys and some stories that she told you. Hold on to it. There's some ways that she taught you how to survive. You know, the town she came from, I never heard of it in my life. But I guess it exists because she is. But God provided for her even in that situation. And provided for her and brought her all this way. And provided for her over those 40 years from 81 to 2001. And the same God who did it for her is showing up today to do it for you. He's challenging you today, Tony. And challenging you today, family. In Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Can I give you another nugget to take with you as you go to comfort you into this moment? Any door that God allows to close he allowed it to close voluntarily that he may open a wider door. Come on, am I talking to someone? There's some greater good that's about to come out of this family. There's some blessings that you have not had as yet that's about to come your way. There's some, some goodness and some grace that's going to flow your way. God has not given up on the family, so don't give up on yourself. You're not out of options. Finally, Romans eleven thirty three says, All oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of our God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways. They're past finding out. God is saying to you today, I want you to trust me. I, I want you to hold on to me in this. I want you to walk after me in this. For I've got better things ahead of you. I've got greater things for you. It's not that he's against you. He's just saying, I've got some better things for you. And he's asking you, don't quit on yourself. And don't quit on God. Because you're never, ever, ever out of options take on Brooklyn and win with Jesus take on circumstances and win with Jesus take on life and win with Jesus love your family some more hug somebody call somebody more often do something that the world will see that you're not out of options God bless you My, 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 what a word, what a word, what a word. I, I hope there's no copyright on it, Pastor. <laughs> uh, some of you may be asking, uh, you know, and perhaps want to send this platform that uh, others can view it. So we just want to remind you if the AV team could just bring it up. It is Maranatha, sdabrooklyn.org, so that you can 
view the service again and again or send it to a friend who was not able to get on at a particular time, may have been working. It's Marnatha SDA Brooklyn dot org. Uh, you can go right there or send someone there that link and they'll be able to view this service all over again. Uh, we are just about at the end and just want to remind you of one or two things so that as we go, we remember it. We will be, I'm going to ask you to exit uh, through the back door there and uh, repast is downstairs and uh, as you follow your nose, you'll know exactly where uh, downstairs is um, so that you'd collect a meal. We're not encouraging. We have not been encouraging as we are still in COVID times. So you collect that meal and you take it with you and uh, you will be able to decide what to do with the meal uh, in your car or in your vehicles. All right. <laughs> You'll decide what to do with it. All right. Um, we, I'm going to invite the one who serves well with me, Pastor Everett Samuel, to offer that prayer of comfort. And she prays like no one else prays. And after that, Pastor Roger Williamson, our powerful man of God, will give us the benediction. And after that, we exit Yes, sorry, we have final viewing, and you join us downstairs for the repast. All right, thank you. I'm going to invite everyone to stand, except for the family members. I'm going to just invite everyone to stand as we pray. My condolences to you, family. Let's pray. The Father in heaven, the God of all comfort, the God who <laughs> makes sense out of nonsense. God, when, when it doesn't make sense to us, it makes sense to you. And sometimes, Lord, we want to come up there and shout at you because it happens so fast. But we are grateful that nothing catches you by surprise. So here we are, and we are laying your daughter to rest. She has run the race. She has kept the faith. And she, she has left a legacy on, Father. Lord, she was a quiet storm. So God, I pray, Lord, that even now, that you will comfort the family members, there are children, there are grandchildren, and Lord, when the pain seems too much to bear and the nights are long and they cannot sleep, may they hear a word of comfort for you. May they hear you say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. May they hear you say, it won't be long, I am wrapping things up, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that you will keep them singing, that you will keep that grandson Plain for you, Lord. May he continue, Lord, to have the spirit that he has, Lord, and to serve you to the end. And Lord, those gloves, those white gloves that was held up, Lord, may you provide hands, Lord, that the usher board, that they will continue the work that Sister Ford left. May you, may you raise people up, oh God, who will bear the badge of honor, Lord, who will serve you, Lord, and who will not just talk, talk, but who will walk the talk, Lord. Be with every person here, every member of the Brooklyn faith and every member of her church family, every person who Sister Ford has touched, Lord. There is that emptiness. There is that hole, God, that hole that was left. And Father, we are just asking you to give each person the strength to hold on to you and not give up. 
We are asking you, God, to help everyone to hold on, even though that doesn't make sense, Lord. We are asking you to comfort, because in times past, let them remember, Lord, when you were their comfort, when there was in pain, when you have turned pain into pleasure. In times past, God, when you have comfort, because they have been down this road before, and you have comforted and you have sustained. So right now, we are asking you, God, if the enemy has any plan, any more surprise up, this, up his sleeve for this family, we pray that you will stop him in his track right now. We ask, oh God, that you will take the family members off the list of untimely death. We pray, oh God, that you will rebuke the devourer, oh God, rebuke the activities of the wasters, Lord, and those, oh God, who wants, oh God, to destroy their life, that you will stop it right now, God. And we speak life and healing over every family, family member and every friend. So God, until then, until then, God, keep and sustain. And we look forward to the day when there'll be no more crying. There'll be no more weeping. There'll be no more sorrows. Oh God, hurry up and come and take us home in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. The closing hymn. Please remain standing for the closing. There's a closing hymn. There's a closing hymn, then the benediction, and then we'll turn it over to Robinson for the final viewing. Thank you. We will sing that wonderful hymn. How cheering is the Christian hope while toiling here below. It buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. How cheering is the Christian while toiling here below. Here below. It buys us up. It buys us. It buys us up while this wilderness of woe. It buoys us up while passing through this wilderness. It points us to a land of rest. Points us to a land where saints with Christ will reign. Where we shall meet, where we shall meet, the love of earth and never part again. Where we shall meet, the love of earth and never part. Fly, lingering moments, fly, oh fly. Fly, lingering moments, fly. Dear Savior, quickly come. Dear Savior, quickly. We long to see. We long to see. We long. See as thou art. And reach that blissful home. Full home, we long to see thee as thou art, and reach that blissful home. May we bow our heads, gracious Father. We have come to this moment with heavy hearts, because the pain of our reality is that our dear sister, whom we have come to love and know has given up the ghost and is now resting, awaiting 
the trump of God. We ask you even now that you may continue to wrap your arms round about these family members. Whisper to each one of them it is well. That you will be there to supply all their needs. Remember to whisper to them Lord that you are still their shepherd even in the valley and shadow of death. Whisper to them that you will supply their needs according to their riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Father never leave them nor forsake them. May her God become their God. May her way become their way. So that on that day and that great getting up morning when the clouds will be rolled up as a scroll and the voice of God will come roaring down the sky that these members of the family will be able to look up and say this is our God we have waited for him and he will save us and they will hear your voice saying come ye blessed of my father just because they walked in the way of your servant be with them now and as we journey from this place remain with them as we journey from this place and the crowds go and the lonely nights may come let them know that you are there. Continue to bless now, provide, and whatever they need, provide. In the saving name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. This time we will call forward the coordinator. And the rest of us, you may be seated for further instructions. Good evening, everyone. You know what happened here today? You celebrated the life of Miss Gloria Ford. And on behalf of the family, Mr. James W. Robinson, funeral director, and myself, Deborah O. Whipper, funeral services, would first like to thank Pastor Roger Williamson. We thank you, sir, for those most encouraging words of wisdom and comfort. We'd also like to thank this church family, the Maranatha SDA Church, for opening the doors so graciously. Thank you for that. To everyone involved, Pastor Ludal, Ludell Monroe, Pastor Everett Samuels, my friend, thank you for your participation here. All of the technicians and musicians and the soloists, for the beautiful song and tributes that were done. We thank you for that. And last but certainly not least, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for your kind deeds, your kind thoughts, and your prayers that were shown to this family during their time of bereavement. Family is now going to allow a final viewing those of you who would like to do so, we're going to ask that you wait until we prepare her, opening the casket. And we want you to come up as you are guided to have your final goodbyes and proceed outward. Tomorrow morning, we will continue our journey to the Cypress Hill Cemetery in, on Jamaica Avenue, where a place of final rest is being prepared. Those of you who plan to go with us, we ask that you be here at 9.30 tomorrow, for we plan to depart 10 o'clock sharp. We must get to the cemetery on time. Again, we want to thank you all so much for coming and sharing these very precious times.